Well, it's a, it's a bright say, summer morning. I say, <laughs> oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story. Oh, that, by the way, I was going to say, we had to back up a little bit because this is the same point. We So we have to go through this. Okay. Uh, I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. Wink. I dare say the biggest in my pants. I will leave my mark on this world and your ass. You can bet on that. His neck is tiny. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Neg him to show your own strength. Wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Be modest, but thoughtful. I'm going to be modest, but th thoughtful, which is how I go through life. For once. Ooh! Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Wink. Now you've got his intention. <laughs> oh, jeez. The flavors were complex but comforting. They had to play between salty, savory, and peppery. It was perfect. That was three strippers I know. Salty, savory, and peppery. He's still so, gone. Okay. I appreciate the compliment, Joan. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step inside to a massive cooking arena where the afternoon's lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Oh, that's right. This is where you chose Colonel Sanders over your friend. Look at this place! It's magnificent! Finally, we get our to show our stuff! It's like a one-day school, isn't it? Something like that? It's like three days. Okay. Wait a second! Oh no! We have to show our stuff! What if I totally blow it? Is she is she giving the peace sign? You're not gonna blow anything. Except maybe kisses of the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena! That's my favorite For today's oh. lesson we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off, you dumb sons of bitches! <laughs> Make Naturally, Miriam looks looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Oh, you already made this choice. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is, me and you, if it wasn't clear. Want to be my partner in the kitchen and in life? Why, well, sure, Joan. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Pop. Hello, new partner. Clank. Beep boop bop biz. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties could be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Pop or Clank? Oh, Clank for sure. Really? Because <laughs> I want to see what he's, if he's going to spiral out of control then. Sorry, Pop. I think Mary will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. I already ate. Yeah, paste. Looks like a paste. It's not entirely clear Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Yeah. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. A nice voice. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know all the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Oh, no. no. Miriam and Clank are going to end up together. Bzzzt. Uh-oh. Tissue, I hardly know you. <laughs> Clank judders. A panel shakes loose. You get the impression this is a sign of affection. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Looks like you two will be fine. Just fine. Now it's time to focus on cooking classwork. All right, you two, for today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a si basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island, but there is an island in the middle of this kitchen. <laughs> it takes two flints to make a fire, especially if you're on G.I. Joe. You get the idea. That was a joke for the uh, Gen Xers out there. <laughs> Thank you. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy. You don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. 
What do you think? The last one. Yeah, we did that. We selected this already. Oh, hearts! You got more hearts, John! See? I wrote with something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Something hot. Maybe mashed potatoes? Wink, wink. And gravy? I got some gravy for you. I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. Let's see that, John. Quickly turn away. Uh, uh, I will get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking the perfect produce is a passion of mine. That's a lot of peas in that sense. Oh, geez, trash. <sighs> Looks like you're getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Coleono Salanders? <laughs> We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business, Chesty LaRue. Sanders' heart is my business, and you better keep your fingers off of my man. Try biscuit. Did someone uh, call for me? Ah, <laughs> uh, no, jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing John's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was a dollar, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into the boiling water and turns his t attention to you and your old, quote-unquote, friends. I oh, howdy there, Ashley, Van Van. Are you working? Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? <laughs> Actually, no. I look, it looked like John was struggling, so we... Wait, I'm doing Southern Ashley. Actually, no. It looked like John was struggling, so we offered them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. She's like Amanda Panda, isn't she? Yeah, a little bit. I was going like to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you could put your, uh, you could might be able to get up to my level. Ha 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 ha. Doubt it. Robert slash kickstand crack. Don't be rude, Van Van. Van Dad. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonial Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of Admiral Chun. <laughs> After all, you try, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. Wink. But Colonial, if you ask me, I might be a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. This is so gross. <laughs> Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for a colono. If you don't, watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things she's, get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders. Guy. Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, your forever bestie, who always has your back. Screw Miriam. Let's go to the Colonel, see what he does. All right. Got to take his shirt off, say here. I'm here to learn and express myself via cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas, bitch. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders so chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements from contracts and handshakes. I took on John as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I rest. <laughs> Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has John's natural talent or their loyalty. To kill a mockingbird. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you tingly, feeling proud and full of potential. You look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mash texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. Ooh. I know just what to do. Slather on some thick gravy. <laughs> 
Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown <laughs> gravy smother. Let me read this again. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. And this is where Oh, Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The oh, two of you hold, holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Oh, jeez. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Zip. Together, you dig the utensils into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage, without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, do something! Do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? No. Hold on right there, John. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. No, so he takes the spoon <laughs> and he throws it right at his lips. I heard that crotch. Can I have potatoes, face? Ugh, Pops got needs to go. Van Van rushes back over, covered a covered I'm dish coming. in his hand. Van Van, <sighs> mashed potatoes with gravy. Pathetic. In yeah, a few minutes, I'll preparing. Huh? It's, it's Although, Van Van. Mashed potatoes with gravy. Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky saltwater sauce. Plated it on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. Ugh. Oh, it says student. Oh, this oh, that's just the... Yeah, the, the way. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have the first bite. And we'll all and you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes the bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed, and it may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. Uh -oh. I, uh, I think I left something in the oven. A bun in the oven. I, I, don't, I don't feel so good. Shoot, boom. <laughs> I killed him. This is a dark Everyone, place. step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of a tentacle being slurped into Pop's mouth. He's Pop winces in pain for a moment, then almost immediately back to his obvious, oblivious self. Oopsie! Tastes like poison! The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds! I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. <laughs> ghost of student. Um, hello. I just He's turned into. He sounds like Mr. What's his name? Um, well, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Gherkin. Yeah, he says ghost. What is? How does Mr. Gherkin's voice sound like? I don't. I don't do Mr. Gherkin. Uh, oh, hello. Ooh, I just turned into a ghost over here. Sounds like Lufa. Okay, go on. Seeing that you're shaken up by the really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. With his pants down. I'm sorry I had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. <laughs> what? Like for real? Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. 
At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and a little more than spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. <laughs> so bad. Before you... Shh, 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 shh. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I don't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them remind me of why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Shh. Colonel Sanders is getting all choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find disturb inspiring. Disturbing. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Uh, Colonel Sanders? Yes, John. <laughs> why do they have to prove this? I'm sure they did. That's something I need to tell you. Oh, jeez. Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I'd be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since I've been working towards that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights, like so many, like so many weights. Well, we should follow our dreams with all of our hearts and souls, and they may grant them like wishes. But, uh, we should follow, I can't read because of his crotch. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ugh. Hey, no, I, you, shut up. Uh, uh, I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Uh oh, he's combing his hair out. Are we forgetting that you're cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Oh, he ate it and died, dumbass. I also... <clears throat> I do declare. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear a long, sad sigh. Uh, <laughs> forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me! I'm the hero. Oof. Spork monster. This work monster is here to fight a hero! Van Van. I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open later, nerds. How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. I put, put my head on Colonel Sanders' body. Be afraid! Be very afraid! Because I'm a monster! See? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I do declare. I don't know what Colonel Sanders. Oh, Papa Trix is here. Bessie is cool. Like Goku on Dragon Ball Z. Is, is he's rhyming? Is he rhyming on purpose? No, Just say it correctly, John. Say it as it's written. Is he's rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? Jeez. But before you can discuss syntax any further, <laughs> it's a turn-based fight sequence. Oh, jeez. What will you do? Attack or defend? I'm going to attack and save uh, Colonel Sanders. You decide to go on the attack. I, I, Which attack will you use? Cook with love. That's your only attack. Oh, I guess it's... Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. The attack really upsets Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Attack or defend? Attack. You decide to go on the attack. It worked last time, right? Cook with love. That's what we gotta do. Cook with love does one damage. Spork Monster won't forget this. Spork Monster is really feeling threatened by your attack. Spork Monster focuses their mash mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Defend? Because I want to keep cooking with love. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation? I guess that's it. You hold your head between your hands and mutters, this is not happening, this is not happening. Spork Monster's no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Spork Monster uses utilitensil. You take two damage from the attack. If you take more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Attack or defend? Attack. Attack! You decide to go on the attack! Cook with love! Cook with love does one damage! Spoke Monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad! I wonder who's gonna have to clean that up! Feeling vulnerable, Spoke Monster prepares for its ultimate attack! Rounded edge! Colonel Sanders! Vile villain. 
Your reign of terror stops here. <laughs> What's on his Colonel Sanders stomachs the energy of a thousand chickens. Pot pie power pinch. Oh, no. Pot pie power pinch does ten damage. Spork monster is defeated. You, you saved me, and you hate chickens as much as Mrs. Nuts. <laughs> An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Forget mercy, mercy, finish, finish him, him, or spare yes. this wretched beast. Now we're going to finish him. No student will no ever student walk the quad. Oh, that's you. No student will ever walk the quad in fear again. The monster messed with the wrong shift. Attack. Cook with love. You ready? Your final attack. You will never survive my student S debt loan destruction. Well, not after today's Supreme Court ruling. No. Supreme Court! <laughs> Ah, Stin Lo Dead Disruption does 10 damage. Spork Monster is completely vaporized. Colonel Sanders looks on in awe. Will you continue to surprise me, John? <laughs> the defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but on closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover to find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. Mm. Borco, that name sounds strangely That's familiar. Colonel, that was Colonel Sanders, really? Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. No, I think, isn't Borco Sprinkle's first name? As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. Oh, you want to geez. thank him, but you don't have enough strength to utter a single word. Word, you feel your covers being pulled over you as you were tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dreams, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For oh, some geez. reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love dreams. Instructing your love. Dreams are weird. That is horrifying. You have a corgi there watching you, it's instructing like the your love. Yes. Make, make sure. What kind of instructions is he giving? Come All on. right, hold, hold, Gris, grasp that firmly. All right, now use a circular motion. Okay, now slip a finger inside of there. There it is. There it is. All right, kiss right there. All right, now tweak that. All right, pitch that and slap that. Slap it hard. Slap it hard. It's like the woman at the hotel. There you go. There you are. Ring that bell. Oh, oh, God. Well, we know what this Oof. signifies. We know what that means! Oof. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. <sighs> Were they memories or premonitions or omissions in the nocturnal time? <gasps> you lie in bed and stare at the ceiling thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used... Blank. Blank. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. That's Before it, you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, so I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um, I think I might like Clank. Uh-oh. Like him? Like, like, like? I know it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him I, uh, I like him. I like like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually totally a sweet guy. Not only that, he's really smart, and he told me all kinds of stories about Cole, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king in high school. He didn't even go, and he was also... Th and was also the convertible that... Go Wait, well, okay, hold on. Yes, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at the school. He didn't at even go to... Oh, oh of a school that he didn't even go to. And was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front... I, I think that should be drove the convertible that he himself rode in at the front yeah. of the homecoming parade. Because he's not a yeah. transformer. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in the pressure cooker language translation there. She looks insane. Either way, maybe it's best if you look at, uh, if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders, nice and slow. 
You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy from school, the most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You are a thing now? Why? We definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into, I, into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Good oh boy. Should we wrap this up? If he's that into me, why don't he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Wink. However, you don't tell you know a second ingredient, too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Ah! Yeah, I yeah. just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. Okay, hold on a second. Let me look at... I just want to make sure that we don't have to go back to do the whole spork monster thing again. Uh, I think we're good. I think we're, I, I, it'll, it'll start from wherever we are. But uh, anyway, there you go.